Hey everyone, welcome back. You know, we love to go deep on a topic every now and then. And well, this one is for you deadheads out there. Yeah, this one's special. We're taking a deep dive into the life and legacy of Phil Lesh. Bassist for the Grateful Dead. That's right, the one and only. We're looking at this really awesome article that came out just after he passed away. Um, yeah. And it's really a beautiful tribute to the man. Yeah, and what I think is so cool about Phil is that he he, he wasn't just like a background bassist. You know, he really, right. he brought this lead-like energy to the bass, which kind of changed how we saw the bass in rock music. Well, and you know what's really interesting here is that his journey started way before the Grateful Dead. You know, right. he was classically trained. Wait, 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 hold on. Yeah. Classically trained for a rock bassist. On the violin and trumpet? No way. Yeah. That's That's, that's got to shape your playing in some pretty wild ways. It did. Absolutely. And you can hear it all over his work with the dead. You know, he doesn't just, you know, play the root notes. He's weaving in these complex counter melodies. He's sometimes even using arco, which is bowing the bass. Really? Yeah. It's like he's bringing an orchestral approach to rock music. That is amazing. Yeah. So, okay. So how does this classically trained musician end up forming one of like the most iconic rock bands of all time? Well, it all goes back to a fateful meeting in 1959. Okay. Phil met Jerry Garcia. Oh, wow. Who was, you know, already starting to make a name for himself in the music scene. And get this. Yeah. It was Garcia who told Phil he should play bass. Really? Yeah. Wow. What a life changing encounter. Right. Talk about right. So they meet, they jam, and then boom, Grateful Dead is born. Well, not quite that simple, but, you know, that meeting was definitely the spark. Yeah. That ignited this musical journey. Yeah. What's really cool about their partnership is how they blended all these different genres, rock, jazz, folk, blues. They even incorporated improvisation into their music. It's like every performance was unique. It wasn't just playing the same set over and over again. It was a living, breathing experience. Exactly. Yeah, and they were not afraid to put it all out there on stage. Oh, no. These weren't just concerts. These were events, yeah. legendary gatherings, where the band would just jam for hours on end, just taking the audience on these crazy sonic adventures. And that's how they got the deadheads. Right. These were people who weren't just going to concerts. They were going on pilgrimages following the band around the country. Yeah. Eager to be part of this unpredictable musical journey. Right, and those live shows, you know, those were like laboratories for Phil's musical ideas, right? Absolutely. And a lot of times those ideas, you know, where they ended up in the songwriting. Yeah, absolutely. He composed or co-wrote some of the Dead's most beloved songs. Like Box of Rain. Box of Rain. Yeah. It's a great song. I love that song. Me too. And Box of Rain is especially interesting because it has a very personal backstory behind it. It was inspired by Phil's father's terminal illness. Oh, wow. And he channeled all of that, you know, the love, the grief, the uncertainty into this beautiful and haunting song. Yeah. It's a testament to music's ability to express what words sometimes can't. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so powerful. It really is. Um, And, you know, speaking of artistry, we can't forget about Phil's contributions to the Dead's legendary live performances. Oh, man. Those shows, those shows were something else. You're special. They were special. Yeah. The article talks about how Phil viewed those performances as more than just concerts. You know, he saw them as these transformative experiences, these moments where the band and the audience could connect on this, like, deeper level. Yeah. Almost spiritual. Almost a spiritual experience. Yeah. Yeah. And he even described it as this merging of individual identities yeah. into something greater. Really? Like a group mind created through this shared experience of music. Wow. And the article actually quotes him talking about this feeling of being completely absorbed in the music. He said, at that moment, I'm not really there. And no one is. We are the music. The greater personality of the group mind. That's what's been created. Whoa, that's powerful. Yeah. It, it really captures the essence of what made the Grateful Dead so unique. You know, they weren't just performing for an audience. They were creating a shared experience. Right. A journey into the unknown. Yeah. And Phil was right there in the heart of it all, driving the music forward with his innovative bass lines. And you know what's cool is that he kept that spirit alive, even after the Grateful Dead disbanded. After Jerry's passing in 1995. Yeah, he did. He formed Phil Lesh and Friends, bringing together all these different musicians. Yeah. Exploring the Dead's vast catalog. Just keeping that improvisational spirit alive. Right. 
It's amazing. Yeah, it's a testament to his dedication to the music and to the community that had grown up around it. Absolutely. He didn't want to let the music fade away. No, he didn't. Wanted to share it with new generations and... Keep it going. Keep it going, exactly. And then he takes it a step further. In 2012, when he opened Terrapin Crossroads. Terrapin Crossroads, yeah. In California. A special place. Such a special place. This incredible venue where musicians and deadheads can just gather, you know... And play music. Play music. music. Suck up the vibe. Yeah, it's become like a hub yeah. for the deadhead community, a right. place where people can just connect with each other right. and experience the music in a way that feels authentic, Yeah. true to the spirit of the Grateful Dead. Absolutely. A beautiful legacy for Phil to leave behind. Yeah. Speaking of legacy, the article shares some really touching tributes from fellow musicians and fans, including one from Jerry Garcia's family. Oh, wow. They said, we will miss his sharply dry humor Wry smiles and brilliant insights. P.S. Say hi to Jerry. Oh, man. That gets me right in the feels. It does. It's a beautiful reminder of the connection they all shared. Yeah. Musically and personally. Musically and personally. And it speaks to the impact that Phil had, not just on the music, but on the people whose lives he touched. Yeah. And, you know, it's clear that Phil's legacy extends far beyond the music. It does. He inspired generations with his vision of music as this like eternal journey. Yeah. This ongoing exploration of sound and emotion. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. And you know what I think is so inspiring about his story is that it reminds us that music is for everyone. It is. You don't have to be a, a virtuoso, you right. know, to find joy and meaning in it. Right. And Phil, with all his talent and training, yeah, he never lost sight of that. Never did. He created spaces where people could come together yeah. and simply experience the magic of music. The magic of music. Whether they were seasoned musicians or just fans looking to connect with something you know, bigger than themselves. Absolutely. And that's what makes his passing so significant. It's uh, not just the loss of a talented musician. Right. It's the loss of a true visionary. Right. Someone who understood the power of music to unite, to heal, to inspire. Absolutely. Makes you think, huh? It does. It makes you think about the power of music. It does. What is it about music that has this ability to connect us so deeply? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think it's about the way that music can tap into our emotions. Yeah. You know, you can express feelings that we might not even be able to put into words. Right. It's like a universal language that transcends cultural boundaries yeah. and connects us on this like primal level. I agree. I think there's something about live music in particular. Oh yeah, for sure. That amplifies that connection. Yeah. You know, it's that shared experience, that feeling of being present in the moment with other people all being swept away by the same sound. Right. Like a collective heartbeat. Yeah. And the Grateful Dead you know, with their emphasis on improvisation and that unique approach to performance, yeah, they really took that to another level. They did. It wasn't just about playing songs. All right. It was about creating a shared experience, a journey into the unknown. A journey into the unknown. That's right. And and Phil's adventurous bass lines. Yeah. They were like the compass guiding that journey. Mm -hmm. The compass guiding that journey. That's so cool. Yeah. Thinking about Phil's impact on the bass... It makes me wonder what other musicians have pushed the boundaries of their instruments in similar ways. As we kind of wrap up here, you know, thinking about Phil's world. Yeah. I'm just really struck by his, like, unwavering belief in the power of live music. Yeah. You know, in a time when everything is getting more digital and more, you know, virtual. Yeah. He created these spaces where people could come together and experience that raw energy. Right there in the moment. You know, music happening right there in the moment. Right there in the moment. It's a testament to how music can transcend the digital and bring us back to a shared human experience. Exactly. And he never stopped pushing the boundary. No, he didn't. Whether it was with the Grateful Dead or with Phil Lesh and friends. Always exploring. Always exploring. Yeah. Always experimenting and, you know, bringing everyone along for the ride. Yeah, taking us all with him. Taking us all with him. And it's that spirit of adventure. Yeah. That openness to the unexpected. Yeah. That I think you know, we can all learn from. Absolutely. It's a reminder that life, just like music, mm -hmm. is a journey. It is. And sometimes the most rewarding moments are the ones that you never see coming. Yeah. You just got to be open to it. You just got to be open to it. Yeah. So as we kind of head back out into the world, yeah, I'm curious what resonates most with you from all this. Well, that's a good question. What's that one thing you're taking away from Phil's story? You know, maybe it's the spark to pick up an instrument yourself, you yeah. know, explore your own creative side. Maybe it's a renewed appreciation for live music. Yeah. That feeling of connection you get when you're lost in the sound with a bunch of other people. Or, hey, maybe it's just a reminder 
to embrace the unexpected in life, you know? Yeah. To be open to new experiences, to approach things with that same sense of wonder and curiosity that Phil brought to his music. That's beautiful. I love that. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the life and legacy of Phil Lesh. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, keep exploring, keep listening, and keep the music playing.